Hi and welcome, it's Jenna from McGuire. Today's video is longer than usual because I kind of got carried away with the technique that I wanted to share with you today and made a ton of different examples. Now this technique allows you to use up any scraps that you may have. I did some rainbow color combinations because I love rainbow, but you could do this in any color combination that you might like. It's a great way to stretch your supplies, especially those scraps. So I'm going to first show you how I created the backgrounds and then pulled them together in cards. I've done techniques like this in the past and I'll be sure to link to those videos below. Okay, so I went through and I grabbed some bigger size scraps. You can use smaller size, but I knew I was gonna be making a ton of cards today, so I reached for the bigger pieces, but you can definitely use those small ones. Now this was a tip from one of my readers. Her name's Carolyn Duncan, and she suggested using a paper shredder to create those thin strips of different colors and save a lot of time. And boy, was she right. Uh, most people, I think, have a paper shredder in their home for security reasons. So I grabbed mine. Mine's very inexpensive. And I ran my cardstock through it and checked this out. You get these nice, even strips of cardstock in no time at all. Now, some paper shredders do a diagonal cuts too, and it really kind of makes the paper unusable. But the inexpensive paper shredders just create strips, as you see here. Mine are about a quarter of an inch wide. So I fed a bunch of pieces of cardstock through there, and I had more strips than I could ever use. So I'm going to have to go back and make some more cards from it. So grab your paper shredder and give this a try. Now, if you don't have a paper shredder or you want some different widths of strips, which I wanted to have, I just grab my trimmer for the rest of them. And you can go and really cut very quickly using whatever trimmer you have. I really like using the Tim Holtz trimmer. I find that cuts thin and thick like butter. So now I have a pile of cardstock st strips that I created out of my scraps. It's kind of hard to say. And with these, I can create a ton of backgrounds. Now I found it fastest to start with a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of paper. That way, once I've covered this with strips, I can cut it in half and I'll have two card backgrounds. Now you could do a full eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock, but I found that if you have smaller scraps, this works better because it doesn't have to stretch as far, which you'll see. So I covered the entire front of it with my adhesive. You could use glue stick or any adhesive you may have. And then I just started putting them down diagonally. Now the reason I put them down diagonally is because I don't have to worry about staying straight. If you put them down straight, you gotta make sure that you don't kind of go wonky as you're starting to glue them down. I found diagonal is more forgiving and it seems to be a little more fun. I kind of started off of the corner and I worked my way back to cover the corner. And then I just started filling in as I went down. Now I did a few different backgrounds for today. Some of them I did uniform like rainbow, like a pattern. Some of them like this, I mixed the width and the colors to kind of blend from one color to the next. Now notice there's a lot of piece of each of the strips hanging off on the right there. That's because I used bigger pieces of scraps. I'll be able to cut those off and save those for another background. So you can use these strips quite a bit and a little goes a long way. So I started with pink and headed to blue and then I switched back and went in reverse order when I hit about the halfway point. That's because I'm going to cut this in half when I'm done and end up with two different backgrounds. So now I have it completely done here. I'm just going to use my trimmer to cut the extras off of the edge of the white cardstock. Now you could use scissors to do this, but I found it was really quick and easy to do with my trimmer. So you can see those big pieces hanging off over there. Those I can use on another card, or I could have used a bigger piece of cardstock, but again, some of the strips weren't long enough to stretch over a wider piece of cardstock. So this worked really well for me. Now I can cut this in half and I have two backgrounds that are four and a quarter by five and a half. So now that I showed you how I created the backgrounds, I wanna show you a few different cards using these type of backgrounds. Notice that some of my backgrounds are a little bit different. I just varied the pattern that I followed or the width of the cardstock strips. So my first idea for using these striped backgrounds is to stamp on it. I decided to do some heat embossing with a beautiful stamp from Mama Elephant. So I'm using my anti-static powder tool over the entire background. You want to be sure to use the anti-static powder tool because if any adhesive is sticking out from between the strips, your embossing powder will stick to it. So I'm using an acrylic block here that has these little feet. That allows me to move it on my surface, on my desk, until I have it positioned just right. 
Once I'm happy with where it is, I press it down and I can get a nice impression. So I stamped that with Versamark ink and now I'll add white embossing powder and heat set it. Make sure you press the stamp very firmly because you want to get into the cracks between each of the pieces. I decided to keep this card simple. I trimmed it down a bit and added it to a white note card. And then I added some adorable Your Neck Stamp clear glitter gumdrops. They're little accents that just add a little something to it. So there's the first example of just doing a simple stamped message on top. Now I gotta move fast through these since I have so many, but my next one shows another example of using stamping along with your stripe background. Now for this one, I took one of the backgrounds I made and I cut it in half so I could make two cards. I also die cut the word celebrate from black cardstock and then the shadow for the word celebrate from vellum and I glued those together. This is a honey bee die set where it actually comes with the word and the shadow dies and there's a bunch of different words in there. It's a great die set. Look how intricate it is. So now I'm going to do some stamping on the background. This time I'm just using Versamark ink and I'm stamping happy birthday repeatedly on the stripes, just here and there, so you can actually stamp on your striped pattern just to add a little bit of interest. It's almost like you're creating your own pattern paper. After I stamped repeatedly along the background, I stamped one happy birthday with black ink and I adhered the celebrate die cut right above that. I put both of these pieces on four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note cards and we're good to go. I kept it very simple, but I think it works when you have all that color going on. Okay, so our first two examples involved stamping on the striped background. Now we're just going to embellish it for these next few examples. I first created a layered butterfly. This is beautiful. The bottom layer is a sparkle vellum and the top two layers I die cut from white cardstock. And I'm just putting a touch of strong liquid adhesive in the center to hold them together. This is Ranger Multimedium. It's strong and that's all you need to hold it together. And then I put antenna in the center also. So this is just a fun, simple embellishment. I decided to go with white and vellum because I have such a colorful background. Now, since I'm using a very detailed greeting here, the one that says you got this from this beautiful Simon Says Stamp stamp set, I decided to do my white heat embossing on a vellum strip and put that over our rainbow background. This will allow the sentiment to stand out a bit more. To add the butterfly die cut to the vellum, I used a few pieces of strong double-sided tape. Now, my favorite way to add vellum to a card so you don't see the adhesive is to hide your adhesive. So I'm putting a strip of double-sided tape at the top of my vellum and I'm going to wrap this around my rainbow piece. I'm also putting some double-sided tape on the back of the butterfly to help secure it also. So I'm positioning it right over it. I'm going to fold that flap down. It has adhesive on it. Put another piece of adhesive on the bottom and fold the vellum along the bottom too. So now we've kind of wrapped our vellum around the rainbow piece so that we don't see it. And now I can add this to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card and we're good to go. I really like using the vellum to kind of soften that bold background that I created and allow the detail of the die cut and the sentiment to stand out. Now using the other half of that rainbow background, I created this card. This one uses another layered butterfly die set, but it's a little bit smaller butterfly, so I put three on my card, along with another white heat embossed sentiment from that same stamp set. So pretty quickly, I was able to create these two cards by using some die cutting and cutting our rainbow background in half. Okay, my next idea is to use the rainbow pattern background that we created as kind of a backdrop for a beautiful die cut. So I used this beautiful butterfly die that actually cuts like a portion out of the front of a card or of a panel. And I just die cut it from some white cardstock. You can see I'm popping all the pieces out. Now I'm gonna put this over our rainbow pattern. Now, since it's covering up a lot of the rainbow pattern, I'm gonna save as much as I can from this, trim away as much as I can, and use that little strip on another card. Even the tiniest strips of this rainbow pattern made from scraps can be used on something. So I'm stamping a sentiment from a beautiful Gina K Design stamp set. I adore this sentiment, I think it's so classy. I'm stamping it with black ink right onto the white panel. After gluing my rainbow pattern piece onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card, I put foam tape on the back of our butterfly die cut piece. 
Now to add a little bit of interest, I put some shimmer on our rainbow using a Spectrum Noir shimmer pen. This is a great way to just kind of enhance it and make it pop through a little more, peeking through that butterfly die cut window that we created. And really this is very simple design. It's hard to believe that was made with scraps. Okay, so my next examples involve a little bit more die cutting with it. I am a big fan of layered background dies and I promised I would share more videos using them. Because they are an investment, I wanted to share as many things that we can do with them as possible. I do believe you can buy these butterfly background dies separately because they are beautiful on their own. But they all three cut a little bit different so that you can layer them together to create something wonderful. I also like that layered background dies give such detail and it makes it look like you spent a lot of time working on it when it's really quite fast. So what I'm doing here is die cutting the two more detailed butterfly background dies from white cardstock. So that's the first two that I'm doing here. And then using the third background die that has more solid look to it, I'm going to cut that from vellum. Now there are many ways you can layer these background dies together and I'll link to a video here of some ideas I shared in a recent video of many ways you can use these background dies. So now I have all my pieces cut. I just wanted to show you quickly. This is the vellum piece that I created. Look how beautiful that is alone on the rainbow background. So you don't have to layer these but I'm going to layer them today because you get such great detail out of it. So now all I have to do is glue all of these pieces together and stick it on top of our rainbow scrap background that we created. Now there are many ways you can adhere these layers together. You can use stick it double sided adhesive on the back of your cardstock before you die cut it and that way the die cut will have adhesive on the back when you're done die cutting. Or you can just put touches of a strong liquid adhesive here and there so that will hold them together and that's what I decided to do. But you can see the detail that you get layering two of those together. My photo will show it even more. Now I am just using the centers of the butterflies or the butterflies themselves that I die cut from vellum and putting that behind these little windows. So I'm actually not using the frame or the background of that third layer. I'm just using the solid butterflies. And again, I'm opting to use liquid adhesive. I just found it was easiest to do. And if you put something heavy on it, it dries pretty quick and it won't let go. Another thing you could do instead with these background dies, they often have a frame around the edge and I can use my narrow double sided tape just along that frame and that's enough to hold it onto the card also. So that's another option. So now I can remove that release paper and just stick that directly onto our four and a quarter by five and a half scrap rainbow piece that we created. I then adhered this entire thing to a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. So it covers the entire front of the card. Now you can see the beautiful detail of those butterflies. I just love it. Okay, I did add some little antenna to this. This is from one of the butterfly die sets that I used earlier in the video. But to be honest with you, I probably would skip this if I made them again. I don't think it needed this detail and I thought it looked better without it. But if you want to, you can add little antenna to the center. Now since I have so much layering going on on this card, I decided to use a word die cut for the main part of my sentiment. And I wanted it to be from black cardstock. It's a pretty detailed die that I'm using, so I'm covering the back of some black cardstock with that stick it double sided adhesive that's great for die cutting. So here I'm taking a larger black cardstock piece than I need and covering the entire back with stick it. But the reason I'm doing that is I can keep the rest of it on hand for future cards. I've been doing this lately and it's been saving me a lot of time. So now my cardstock has adhesive already on it. So I'm using these paper tray word dies to cut from the cardstock and it's a really detailed die. And so I'm glad the adhesive's already on the back. Now I can lay this onto my card and I can move it around and I have some freedom to move it as much as I want. Once I'm happy with where I position it, I just use a bone folder to press it down and then it becomes permanent. I also stamped part of the sentiment above and below this die cut. This is from a coordinating stamp set. And I stamped this and put the die cut kind of along the lines of the pattern in the background just to kind of tie it all together. That also allowed me to have a smoother spot to do my stamping. So here you can see the detail in those butterflies. You've got the shimmer vellum behind the butterflies and then the two layers on top of that. 
And I did two variations of sentiments and then a third example that I created earlier. I really like this design and I think it'd be beautiful with maybe like uh, all shades of blue cardstock strips in the background. It's really fun to do. Okay, so I have one more example of using die cutting along with these scrap rainbow backgrounds. And this gives the look of die cut inlay without all the work. So I'm using this beautiful word die. It's great because one cut creates all this detail. And I've cut it from white cardstock that I had put that stick it double-sided adhesive on the back of. So the adhesive is already on it. I have trimmed down two pieces of the rainbow pattern backgrounds that we've created to the right size, and I'm just popping this right on top. The other piece will be used for a black cardstock example. So after I've put this on, we have our white die cut kind of sitting on top of that rainbow background. But I wanted to make it kind of look like a die cut inlay. And this is where I totally cheat, and I put it inside a piece of folded typing paper. Then I run it through my die cut machine and it squishes it down. It flattens it really nicely and it almost looks like it's a die cut inlay. It makes it nice and smooth. And when the cards are done, it's kind of hard to believe that this was created with one die and a bunch of scraps. So I smushed them down, added them onto note cards and we're good to go. I did one example in black and one example in white. I did put some shimmer on the rainbow background on the black one before I squished it down so you can see some of that shine coming through. It just adds a little bit of interest. I can't get over how fast these were to create, so I plan to do more. Okay, I have one more example for you today, and this is to do a little bit of weaving with your paper cardstock strips. Now this I showed in a video as an example, but I didn't show how to do it and I got a lot of questions. So I thought I'd show you today. The nice thing about this card is that you don't need that many strips and they don't need to be long. So that's a good option if you don't have many scraps to use. Basically, I have a bunch of random pieces here and I'm just putting adhesive on the back of them. The reason I'm putting a few up close to each other is my adhesive is wide enough to cover two. So I might as well conserve the adhesive and put the adhesive on two strips at once. Now on my work surface, I'm laying these out into kind of like a tic-tac-toe board and I'm alternating weaving them. So you can see I put one horizontal, then one vertical, then one horizontal, then one vertical. And I'm going as random as I can. I don't want this to look like a forced pattern. And that also makes it a lot easier. Now as I add each one, I'm alternating between putting it on top of the previous cardstock strip and putting it below it. So you can see you're just creating a weaving pattern. Once you do it once, it's pretty easy to do. It works well to put it onto uh, a work surface that's non-stick, maybe a craft sheet or like this cutting mat that I have. It's sticking there, but it doesn't stick there permanently. So I can pull it off and just move it to my card when I'm done. So I wouldn't arrange this on your cardstock unless you're really sure of where you're putting all your pieces. I find it easier to move it once I'm done. So I am just alternating again. You'll see me weave this piece in here. I'm going over and under and over and under and then just pulling it right up into place. It really doesn't take that long to do. Now once I'm done, I can just lift this up carefully and then trim off any of the extra pieces. Now it's ready to stick right onto my card. I created a layered white butterfly die cut just like I did earlier in this video and added that to the top center. And I white heat embossed a sentiment from this Mama Elephant stamp set onto a blue cardstock strip. And I'm just tucking the ends into the weaving and leaving the rest on top. I thought that was a great way to tie in a sentiment since I forgot to leave a space for one. So I just heat embossed it onto one of the strips. And then I'll be sure to glue that down. If you're feeling like some of your pieces are kind of popping up, just squirt a little strong liquid adhesive under them here and there, and that should be good. So there you have it, a bunch of ideas for using your cardstock scraps as strips to create rainbow backgrounds. They are so much fun to do. I hope you'll give them a try. Below in my YouTube description, I have links to everything that I used in case you're interested in checking them out. Also be sure to go to my blog. I'll have much more information there along with a bunch of photos for you. If you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button for future videos. And then in the middle are two other videos that might be of interest to you and kind of are related to, today, to today's topic. Thanks for watching. I hope you return again and we'll see you soon.